So is China using uh, India's neighbors? Let's dive into that and there are many layers within. So Ambassador Partha Sarthi, who's uh, not just got his finger in the pie in the past about uh, dealing with uh, these issues, but he's also closely tracking what's happening both in Pakistan and in Sri Lanka and the Chinese interference is with us. G Namaste and uh, good to speak with you, Ambassador Partha Sarthi, as always. Andrew K.P. Leung is also there. The Foundation Day has just gotten over. Our Independence Day is on the cusp of it. So there is lots happening both in China and uh, uh, and in India at this point. Andrew K.P. Leung. Uh, and I also have Dr. Uh, Paikya Soti Sarwanamuthu. P. Sarwanamuthu is the foundation uh, Founder Executive Director, Center for Policy Alternative, CPA, and a member of the Foreign Policy Advisory Group. And he's joining us from Colombo. So Dr. Sarwanamuthu, Namaskaram and thank you very much for joining us. So let me first ask you, you, sir. Let me first ask you, how would you read uh, first the Sri Lankan government saying defer your visit and then the deference happens by five days and then saying, okay, now you can come in between 16th and the 22nd. Is there too much of pressure? Well, I mean, to begin with, I think the initial intimation that the Chinese gave was when the Sri Lankan government was in somewhat disarray with the president having threatened and then subsequently time. And so they wanted a cooling off period, perhaps, in which they would resolve the problems associated with the visit. But let me make one point clear. I mean, this is not the first visit by a military vessel, and we are not quite sure whether this is exactly a military vessel or not, but this is not the first visit by, an Amer by a military vessel. I mean, we've had American warships come and dock in Sri Lanka, and Sri Lanka, given the current situation, given that it depends on China, and it is going to depend on China very importantly to be able to take that haircut, that all creditors should be treated alike with regard to the debt restructuring, mm. and given the exposure to China as far as our debt is concerned, and of course, our debt of gratitude, if not anything else, to India for helping us in this current situation, I think we wanted a cooling off period, and now we have said to them that you can come on such and such a date. Um, the Sri Lankan government in this respect is caught in, in a pickle, in a sense. It's caught, it's squeezed between India and China. This is part of the legacy of the Rajpaksas, where they tilted towards China to such an extent that the Chinese could well turn around and say, look, the Hambantota port is basically yeah. ours. It's leased to us for 99 years, and we should have a right to visit it whenever we want to kind of argument. But I think hopefully that this visit can pass without further consequences, but the exact resolution of the balance between India and China, given that Sri Lanka has to take both into account, needs to be worked out within the foreign policy establishment of Sri Lanka. Mm. Interesting. But uh, then this could compound problems if they are uh, the, because this 99-year lease could also come back to bite the Sri Lankans because they cannot, uh, unless there's somebody who can buy out this debt and uh, extend perhaps some very, very nominal rate of interest to the Sri Lankans, how is it that you're going to emerge out of this? Because then nations are going to come calling and this pressure is going to continue to build. And India is not very happy. This, this, uh, yeah, Yon Wang Phi, this, this uh, is a double ship. It's a Chinese spy ship. Many other nations have this and it can listen in. So if it is going to listen in, then we have a problem. Its intentions in, in these waters is what India is very, very worried about. But Ambassador Parthasarthi, how do we see the moves? Because there are many plays happening simultaneously. Well, I think we should look at it at a larger perspective. Uh, firstly, over the last couple of months, uh, the uh, Sri Lankans have yielded too much we wanted. Uh, firstly, the, uh, our share of the construction of the Colombo port along with the Japanese, that has been exceeded too. Uh, mm. Three power stations which they had sanctioned to China, just too close to our maritime boundaries, is now being given to us. So they have given it a try. But the fact of the matter is they are deep in trouble with China. Mm. They went in, and as your friend said from Sri Lanka, reckless borrowing by the Rajapaksha regime, 
primarily to benefit their own constituency. Hamban Tota is the heart of Rajapaksha's constituency. Mm. And therefore, there has been this pressure. Now, at, right at this point in time, when they are, uh, you know, their economy is sinking, it's been largely helped out by India. And if they get finan IMF financing, they should be pretty clear that it is largely because of our intervention mm. with the IMF, with the Americans, that is coming through. Mm. Because it's uh, certainly the international financial institutions linked to the Americans are not too pleased with what Sri Lanka is doing. But we don't want to captive, uh, sort of push it to a corner at a time when it is going through. So as I see it, this is a matter which will have to be seriously negotiated with Sri Lankans. Mm. They went just too far with giving those three island uh, uh, sort of power stations too close to our maritime boundaries. Uh, they stalled when Japan and India said we were ready to finance. Yeah. And are still there are sections of the Sri Lankan establishment stalling. But uh, I think uh, the fact of the matter is we will have to work closely with the Japanese and the others to mm. ensure that they don't fall for the Chinese temptation. Because the Chinese are now putting the squeeze with such vessels. Uh, we give an uh, okay, mm. okay here. The next stop is going to be Maldives. Yeah, correct. See, and uh, 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 this uh, sort uh, of uh, espionage which this particular vessel, from my naval friends tell me, hmm. is pretty extensive. Yes, we've got them, uh, Sri Lankans, to uh, get them to lay off immediately our maritime boundaries. Hmm. But uh, this, uh, this will have to be followed through. Uh, Sri Lanka uh, perhaps now realizes what, this, uh, what the Chinese mean when they put See, the nations are on. waking up when it is too late, Ambassador Partha Sarthi. I, I, I just have another no, no, question. I think this will have to be a continuing exercise. I, I, I just have a follow-up question. Is this a possibility that the nations who are wanting to protect the uh, interests in the Indo-Pacific and especially around this subcontinent and in this passageway, can their nations come together, form a bank or a co corpus which buys out not just the debt, but also loans this at a lower la rate of interest. So is, is that not possible, especially with nations like America, Japan, India, uh, Australia, and some of the other countries can come together, form a corpus and a pool, which will help nations which are, cr which are in the clutches of Chinese's, uh, China's economic hegemony and free them. Now we need, because there are strategic points, Djibouti, Maldives, Sri Lanka, well, Pakistan is a different, uh, you know, this altogether. That's a different story. So let's keep Pakistan out of it. But even Nepal, Bangladesh, Myanmar, there, there is a big one. And if you do the math, it totals to about 65 to 70 billion dollars. That's where this amount is, this corpus is. And nations can come together to form a hundred billion dollar corpus and try and say that, all right, we will buy out the debt. You pay us the money back, but at a very, very nominal rate of interest. But in this interest that the strategic interests are protected. Is that I'm not possible? I'm afraid that much as that may sound ideally good, uh, practically the Western countries are not going to do it. Mm. Uh, because uh, they have far too many commitments in Ukraine and other places right now. And therefore, we'll have to play our cards realistic, which is precisely what the PM and Jayashankar are doing. Mm. Because right now, we've got them, as I said, off the islands. We've got ourselves into Colombo. But there is also, I must say, uh, a anti-Indian lobby f which was f uh, fostered by the Rajapakshas for far too long. And I think we should do some plain talking with the, ch uh, with the Sri Lankans about that. Mm. Uh, we have done such talk. No, but, 